Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Saturday, March 3rd, 2018. We're going to go over a couple things uh, on spaceweather.com, actually to our space uh, site. Taking a look at our current solar wind conditions, as you see in the yellow, solar wind speeds are hovering in the 325 to 330 kilometers per second with a high density of about 30.6 right now. Thanks, Mari. <clears throat> Taking a look at the KP indices, uh, the flux today, we did see some minor activity out of AR2700. That was Earth facing a few days ago. As you see now, it's on the, the far western limb of the sun moving away. And I thought there was a new feature, but the KPs. I have, not, I have not added it yet. Oh, okay. I'm developing it and I have not done it yet. Mari is constantly updating the site. Uh, I believe the KP indices was sitting right at about a two. Well, that on the website right now, the source, um, for whatever reason, uh, the school hasn't updated it automatically, so gotcha. I'm going to replace it. Gotcha. Well, we appreciate the effort there. Looking at our star, um, I saw a couple of uh, channels mention this as well uh, earlier, and it looks like on the far eastern limb of our sun, it does look like there's a lot of activity out here. Uh, you can see the the connections. It's pretty bright. So I guess we are in a sunspot watch. Uh, ben was the first channel that I saw that uh, made that uh, observation, I should say. But other than that, not really looking at anything as far as Corona Hole. Uh, there is one in the northern region but nothing to affect us immediately. <clears throat> Keep our eyes on the possibility of the sunspot that we have forming on the far eastern limb. And again, you can definitely see uh, there's a lot more, it's a lot brighter over here as it becomes closer to earth facing. So AR2700 went out with a bang, that's for sure. And we've, um, We've covered a lot about Riley, uh, but there's also a couple other places as well. That's what I want. Well, you shouldn't have switched it, silly. What? This is right here. Right. The GS, if you want this. Sorry about that, folks. Um, in Canada, I wanted to mention this real quick because Riley has kind of uh, stolen the headlines with uh, with the the tremendous damage and destruction that Riley has brought. And we did a video earlier that was about six minutes long, and Mari put a lot of photos and a lot of video footage in it. So, and that's just from earlier in the day. So I can only imagine. As they continue to clean up and the high tide continues to go in and out, uh, I'm sure we'll see more damage. But I thought this was uh, interesting to mention here in Canada. They were looking at a, um, they got a month's worth of snow in 40 hours. And this was, oh... This is near the Calgary area. Now, this is normal weather for Canada right now, but I thought that this was worth bringing up just because of the fact that, you know, to get a month's worth of snow in 40 hours, and we do know how much snow that this area gets. And let's go ahead and see if they even tell us that. They got 10 to 15 centimeters of snow. The forecast, It was forecasted to fall throughout the day. So this was nothing like what we saw with Riley, uh, but it was a heavy snow. And it is late in the season. Um, you know, technically March 1st is the meteorological first day of spring. So technically, if we went by that rule of thumb, 
we would be talking about you know springtime storms but right now uh, old man winter has uh, paid another month's rent for sure as we're still seeing the heavy stuff falling in Canada on the west coast and of course Riley uh, guys check out a couple of our videos that we did we had some uh, footage on the damage and the forecasting of Riley uh, I, I will say this out of watching both AccuWeather and weatherchannel.com um, their live coverage was the reporting was great the forecasting was right on this was one of the storms that I thought that the weather channel covered well and didn't overhype it kept it uh, straightforward for a change so I was impressed with the coverage of uh, of Riley and the accurate information and the forecasting that they did over there at the channel so anyway uh, to look at tropical tidbits real fast as well talk about here in the states again we're gonna be looking at another storm system right now it's uh, winter weather or winter storm Quinn on the west coast it's already affected uh, California and it's continuing to snow throughout the Sierra Nevadas and I'm gonna stop it right here on Tuesday again we're gonna start seeing that heavy rain in the southern part of the country already they've had a few dry days but uh, this right here is not going to help the efforts of their cleanup so expect more flooding again early Tuesday heading into Wednesday and then once again on Wednesday we see a low pressure system form up over Ohio Northeast Ohio move it further into Wednesday into Thursday uh, stop it again on Thursday here we go so we are looking at a potential another another nor'easter possible not definite but possible and this time it looks like the coastal areas will pick up more snow than rain than last time so add on more flooding and then if freezing temperatures on top of that with snow so uh, the cleanup won't even begin to start really until tomorrow Monday and by the time Wednesday and Thursday rolls around, they're going to be digging out of another storm system. Again, this forms, it start, the low pressure starts over northeast Ohio and then into Wednesday, late day, a low pressure system forms just off the coast of the Carolinas, Virginia, into Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. As we move further, further into the forecast, we could see it strengthening off the coast once again. So they'll be keeping their eyes on this going through Thursday. I mean, the Northeast looks to get pounded this time with snow. If these uh, forecast models are correct, they're talking about lake effect snow here in Buffalo, in Western New York. The Lake Erie is only at 26% ice right now. And this is Friday and they were talking about Friday and Saturday, but look folks, that winter storm is still in the Northeast in Maine, upper New York. So we're, we're talking, we're still seeing the effects from winter storm Quinn. And this is going into early, oh, I'm sorry, this is on Friday, by end of the week, but end of the weekend, from Wednesday till Friday, we're still dealing with the effects in the Northeast with Quinn. And then as we go throughout the day, Friday and Saturday, look how the snow just forms back over the Northeast. The lake effect kicks in once again, and the Northeast, Friday and Saturday we get a quiet day at the end of the day on Saturday another low pressure system forms just beneath Western New York and then here we go again early next week Sunday night into Monday more heavy rain into the south in the Ohio Valley and this just continues folks another low pressure off the coast again we're looking at another crazy storm in a situation just as bad not as close to the the coast but this is two weeks out so anything can change so not one not two but possibly three nor'easter storms in the next 15 days and that's just incredible this weather pattern it looks deceiving it's quiet and then it gets back up with moisture again Wave after wave. 
And then we start to see the West Coast once again build up with more moisture. <clears throat> it seems like, uh, you know, Winter Storm Quinn starts off in the West. And then Quinn kind of steals the show the rest of the way out. And we kind of, you know, the West gets ignored here. But at the end of this uh, forecast, we see large amounts of moisture in the Northwest and in Northern California. There's one system right there. So by March 11th, the same time that we're getting heavy rains to area that doesn't need heavy rains, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, Alabama, we're going to have uh, heavy rains and snow in the upper elevations on the northwest section of our country. And they get wave after wave. Wow. Um, we're going to have to watch the northwest. Starting on the... It looks like around the 10th of March. We get a dry out day. High pressure system is dominating the area. And then by Sunday, we see the system approaching. And here's one system. Here's two system. System number three. This is by Wednesday. System number four. System number five by the end of this forecast. So the West is definitely looking at a lot of moisture, a lot of rain. Yes, this is their rainy season. But uh, hang on to your hats, folks. We have to let the forecast do its thing here. But the mudslides are definitely going to be a huge concern, especially in Northern California, Mid-California. And just with that much rain coming in back to back to back like this, um, you know, we've been we've had a lot of attention. And, you know, and still, this is two areas we've got to watch in the next two weeks is going to be the south the Northeast and of course the Northwest and you know, the central plains, you guys are kind of missing out on the party right now, which it, you know, at this point there's more than enough to share. So I kind of hope this spreads out, but it doesn't look like this weather pattern is going to change anytime soon. It's going to be the Northwest, the East coast, the mid, the Midwest and the South and just two large systems here by the end of this model run, just two large systems on each coast. One exiting, one coming on. And that's the way it's going to be for the next several days. We get a few days off here before this next storm system. Things are winding down in the northeast. They're still getting coastal flooding. But by early next week, Tuesday into Wednesday, we see another system on the coast forming. Snow begins to fall in the northeast. The winds pick up again. And we are looking at, by Thursday, a full-on winter storm once again in the northeastern part of the United States and uh, we'll just have to keep our eyes on this one still I think it's a little early to identify what kind of snowfall we're going to get with this one we're almost seven days out on the storm but something there's plenty to keep our eyes on um, so let's go over here real fast to watchers and I wanted to take a look at I mean, unreason. Oh, Mari actually brought this one to my attention today. We had a volcano eruption. Again, Winter Storm Riley is dominating the news. Getting more unrest from another volcano. Nothing major, but uh, just something to keep your eyes on again. Another volcano that's awakened. Basavi, I believe is what it is. It's 200,000 year. Uh, it was dormant for 200,000 years. Now it's coming awake again. We had one in Japan right after that as well become awake. And now we're talking about one in Alaska that are showing signs of uh, possible activity at this. Now, there was an explosion. The surface temperatures, I guess, were elevated. And it looks like several times they were elevated over the past week. So there is definitely a little bit of action going on. Very minor, very small, but definitely the beginning of a possible awakening of this volcano as well. And last time I checked, we had about 36 volcanoes that are actively going off right now. And that's about average. 
during, you know, especially during a minimum, they start to become a little bit more frequent. So nothing too off the charts yet, but we've had a couple decent sized explosions. Mari, how you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm uh, just chatting <clears throat> away here. How's how's the how's everybody in the we chat? Got all our, our happy subs. I, I love all you guys. It's so great to, you know, just chat with you here on our live streams and have you come in and it's like you're you're in our home and we're all family discussing weird weather. <laughs> well, beyond weird weather. Um, it's hard to keep up with it all. It is. In the chat, I was asking Starman about the food supply issues because if you read what's going on in the UK, there's certain routes. People can't get to grocery stores. Some grocery stores are sold out. There's looting. You know, I'm like, is it as bad as what I'm reading? And he said it's only specific areas. It's not widespread. So... That makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, but there are parts that are kind of cut off right now, too. Yeah, so it's that's... worrying for people. And that brought us to, you know, <clears throat> not to underestimate these storms. You know, hopefully more people realize the this weather is pretty serious and to be prepared, you know, no matter what. And, and that makes me want to look, too, at the, um, at the overall uh, look from... The Atlantic heading over towards our friends across the pond <clears throat> and you know every storm that we have they, they get a taste of as well and I'm concerned about uh, it doesn't let me do it on that map okay I'm concerned about uh, Riley its direction uh, if Starman's in the chat I wouldn't mind keep an eye on what he says in this answer but I was curious to know are you guys expecting to feel any effects from Riley? This storm is so big. And I can't imagine that this low pressure... So let's see if we can try to find it here. See if we see it come into play. He, uh, Starman chimed in. He said the 10th they see a possible snow event again. I'm not sure if that's the same system or not. We can have a look. It very well possibly could be, if he's talking about the 10th, it's probably the one that we're getting around the 7th. So that system, but boy, look at Where this. Where does Riley fizzle out? Look at this. Yikes. Here's your snow event right here. Uh, it starts off as rain, and as it progresses throughout the weekend, wow, it really gets uh, pretty bad here. It's a pretty big snow event, but right behind it is uh, rain, so that uh, that has to be a little reassuring that hopefully you guys are about done with this odd cold weather that you're experiencing. It looks like some temperatures kind of right normalcy. Look at the size of that low pressure system just rotating around. My goodness. I'll tell you one thing about these storms, and we're in the very beginning of this grand solar minimum, and I've always been a fan of the weather for so many years I love watching radar I like watching the patterns and observing and the one thing that I can tell you is that I've just I've never seen the the storms as big as they are I've never seen you know the effect and how big um, some of these storms get and the reach this weekend, Riley, the nor'easter, the winds were reach, reaching all the way down into Florida. So, you know, as time goes on, if this is just the beginning, I mean, I'd hate to see where we're sitting at in about 10 years from now. And that's what's really alarming to me is that we're seeing storm systems that we've never seen before. Um I, you know, here's another topic I wanted to bring up too, and maybe someone in the chat who's watching can chime in on this. Uh, I think that there's something to the snow over the last couple of years, especially this year, how bright the snow is. If you're in your house and you look outside and then you turn back around and look in your house, it's it is how blinding it is yeah yeah like it's like almost like it's reflecting like here's <laughs> it's just radioactive light or something it's wild so i ponder the question blinding light are the highly charged particles to blame 
for the snow being so bright, for it radiating, for it it's giving either, off like a charged, like it's glowing. Either that or my eyes are getting cold or old. Uh, I go outside and if it's snow on the ground and I walk back inside, if I'm not wearing, I have to make it a habit to wear sunglasses now. Otherwise, I'm truly snow blinded. And I don't remember being blinded like that by yeah. the snow, even as a kid. Oh, maybe if I was outside for a long time in the snow but it happens to me and you so maybe it's it could be just us <laughs> for getting it's, old date it's blinding or, or maybe there's something more to it i don't know uh, you know i there's so much to you know spectrums that we don't see sound light vibration there's so much unknown who knows starman uh shared something with me earlier about um the tropics temperature and how they're they were down negative 12 uh, last month, and it went slightly up to a, a positive of 0 0.03. So it didn't really move up, but the trend is down. So you have the tropics uh, anomaly to watch, and then you have the Roy Spencer's uh, lower atmosphere uh, anomaly to watch as well, and that shows uh, a decline as well. So um, I appreciate all the support that we get from you guys out there, our subs out there at Twitter or Facebook or YouTube. You guys do a lot of collaborating and it's really appreciative when we have a positive uh, focus out there on the topic, when people are really just trying to put two and two together and maybe not all of us have all the answers and that's where some of you kind of step up and help out and and, you know, give us the answers instead of, um, I don't know. What, I guess what I'm trying to relay is I'm just really impressed about how everybody comes together in our community to help each other out with information. Um, I look at people like Starman as a uh, trust, reliable source for any kind of European news on the weather. Uh, he doesn't overdo it. He doesn't underdo it. I feel like his reports are right on all the time. So, Mari, did you want to add anything before we uh, head out of here tonight? No, I, I said my bit in the chat, and, you know, it's just good to get on live and see all the guys watching us. Oh, my goodness, we got, like, over 100 people watching us right now. Good so. to see everyone out there tonight. Thanks for stopping by and tuning in. All right, guys, we are going to sign out. We hope that uh, you will like and share and subscribe. We'll talk soon. We're hovering in the 325 to 330 kilometers per second with a high density of about 30.6 right now. Thanks, Mari. <clears throat> Taking a look at the KP indices, uh, the flux today, we did see some minor activity out of AR2700 that was a few days ago as you see now it's on the the far western limb of the sun moving away and i thought there was a new feature but the kp is not i have not added it yet oh okay i'm developing it and i have not done it yet mari is constantly updating the site uh, i believe the kp indices was sitting right at about a two well that on the website right now the source <laughs>
Welcome back to the Grand Solar Minimum channel. Today is Saturday, March 3rd, 2018. We're going to go over a couple things uh, on spaceweather.com, actually to our space uh, site. Taking a look at our current solar wind conditions, as you see in the yellow, solar wind speeds are 